In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a super easy yet super effective way to set up your Monday.com boards that will allow you to track projects, tasks, and time. It will allow you to see the progress made on projects as well as plan time versus actual time. We're going to jump into an implementation that I used for a cybersecurity company. They wanted to make sure that their team would use Monday.com. So we needed a setup that was really easy for them to use. So let's jump in to this implementation and you'll see how you can easily implement it within your team within minutes. Hi, my name is Tara and I'm a certified Monday.com partner and the founder of Simple Day. My goal is to help you build powerful yet simple workflows with Monday.com. If you need help with a custom implementation, my contact details are in the description below. Let's jump into today's tutorial and make Monday the best part of your week. Before I jump into this video, I do want to let you know that this video was sponsored by AppFire. They are the team that created the seven pace time tracking app, which is the app that we will be using within this video. I'm going to show you this implementation that we did by actually building the boards out with you so you understand how to do it and why we did it. I just want to take a step back a little bit to talk a little bit about the use case so you understand some of the details. This use case was set up for a cybersecurity company. Now, what they do is they have certain projects that they run for specific clients of theirs. So they'll have a project like they need to run a penetration test. They also outsource people that actually work for those other clients. So they will have someone that will be like the CISO officer, like in their client's office, like one day a week or two days a week. But basically people are outsourced to actually work within their client's office. So they view both of these things as kind of a project. And then sometimes they have smaller projects. So some larger projects like a penetration test can have numerous steps or it could be something that's ongoing. And then they have some tasks that are really one-time tasks. Now they do have an office manager who needs to basically take the time of everyone at the end of the month to understand how much time each employee put towards each client, because that's going to affect their billing. So being able to track time was a really important piece of this because they want to understand how much time they allotted for the project, how much time they actually spent for the project. And then they have all this information so that way they can use it for billing of the client. So in order to do this, we did use the seven pace app. I do have another video about how to install it. As I set this up, it's already installed. So if you're not sure how to install it, I definitely recommend that you install it. So we're going to start here by creating this projects board, as I will call it. You can obviously call it whatever you want. I do want to say that this setup is something that can easily be done in any kind of company. It doesn't need to be in cybersecurity. It's a really, really simple and easy setup that anyone can use. So we're going to start by creating our board. I added a name. I'm going to keep it as a main board. Just keep these as items and just hit create board. Now you can see here I have my main board. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this group to just be active projects. And I'm going to change this to be completed. I personally like completed projects to be green because then it kind of shows me like, good, we're done. It's completed. Now let's build out the columns that we need here. So like I said, we want to be able to accomplish a few things within these boards. Let me just review the goal so it's really clear. We want to be able to understand the overall time on a project. We want to be able to understand the estimated time on a project. We want to be able to know who's working on what task for that project because multiple people can work on different tasks. We also want to have dashboards so we can track the information and lastly, we want to be able to have timesheets at the end of the month so we understand what we spent, the time spent per project and also per, which is really per client. So back to our board, we have a person column. 
we have a status column and we have a date. I'm actually going to delete this date column because the client preferred to use a timeline column. And I'm going to move, go to the column center and I want to show you a combo. So they want to use this combo of timeline and numeric. So basically what it does is it pulls in the duration. So let's just say I set a project to be this number of days. So you can see that it puts in the time duration of how long that project is. Now, for each project, each item is going to be a project. So I'm actually going to rename this. So let's rename this to test, which is actually one specific project that they have. We can do another one, which is a security, security audit. So here they have two specific examples that we are going to, sorry, that we're going to look at these specific projects. So I can start by adding a timeline and great, we have our timelines. Now, they also want to add in, as we said, the, the expected time for these projects. So here we can add in to time. The next thing that we want to add in is actual time. So I'm going to add in a numbers column, and I'm going to show you how we're tracking this after. So don't worry for actual time. Okay, so now we have expected time and actual time. I'm also going to add in a formula column because they want to know what the difference is of between the expected time and the actual time. But I'm actually going to put that on hold for one minute because they also want to add in sub items, which I'm going to get to. Now, they, like I said, they do have some projects. So like a penetration test is a project, but they do have some tasks that need to be done with within that project. So they actually wanted to add them as sub items. Now this is what I think is the simplest way to set up Monday. You can have projects as items and you have sub items are your specific task. So here we can just have like task one and task two. So here we have three different tasks for this specific project. Again, we have an owner, we have a status column and we have the date. Now here we're going to want to also enter the actual time. So that way we know what the actual time is. Now, since we're gonna be tracking time on a sub item level and an item level, I need to take that into account for my formula. That's why I didn't wanna finish the formula before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on these three dots and I'm gonna click on show summary and parent item. And you can see that it is going to show me the summary. So for example, just if I enter a one here, you can see that I automatically have the one here. Now I'm going to move this over to my actual time because here I have my expected time, which is project wide. And here I can have my actual time, which is going to be entered. And I also have my sub item, sub item actual time. But really these two just needed to be added up and then subtracted from the expected time. So that's why I put my formula on hold. And now I'm going to go back and complete my formula. So let's click on these three dots and we can click on settings. Now I want to show you something really cool. If you don't know how to do formulas, you can go to the formula builder. So I can write add up actual time and sub item actual time and subtract that from expected time. Let's see what happens. If I click this, it's going to populate a formula. I can insert it and I can set the item. So let's just, as example, let's just make sure this works. So let's say our expected time is three hours. Actual time is an hour and an hour. So that gives us an hour left. So pretty cool that we can use AI to help with formulas if you don't know how to do it. So this is, we'll just call this time left. Okay. So this is really simple. <laughs> Basically, what we've done is projects are on an item level and tasks are on sub item levels. Sometimes you have a one task, like a single task, which can be a project, but it's really like one task. So you can just add it as an, as an item level. And we're tracking time no matter if it's an item level or a sub item level. Now let's get into the 
time tracking. So as I mentioned, you need to add seven pace as an app. So just in case you haven't done it, you can go to the app marketplace and add it. Once it's added, you need to add it as an item view in your board. So you click this and here I need to go to plus to add the view and I'm just going to search for seven pace. And here it showed up. And now I'm adding seven pace specifically to the item level. So I have it here and I'm also going to add it to the sub item level. So I'm doing the exact same thing. And I just add it. So now I have a way to time track on both of both item level and sub item levels. Now, I wanted to show you two really cool automations that you need to add in. Now, you see that I added two columns for the actual time, but remember, I'm tracking time in seven pace. So what I want to do is create an automation that automatically sends the time here. So if you click on automate, and here you can click on seven pace, and here you can see I have a number of automations. I'm going to add this automation when total time tracked on an item changes, put the new total into a column. So here I want to add it into my actual time. I'm going to add the automation. Now remember, we also did this on the sub item level. So I want to do the same thing on the sub item level. So I'm going to go back and choose this one. update automation. So now I have two automations that are pulling in my actual time. So let's remember when I've tracked time in seven pace, it's going to automatically pull it in to these two different actual time columns. Then we can compare expected time to actual time. Now, before I show you how this works and we actually start using it, there is another setting that you need to set up within seven pace. If you click over here on app features, so you can go into settings over here. Now I've added a client setting already in a custom field, but you would need to add this if you want to track by clients or project projects, you just click on create custom fields and you can have a client or drop down. And you can see that I have, these are my options of different clients. Now, the reason that we needed to do this is because remember the client wanted to track the clients, how long we've spent on the specific clients. Or if you're doing it by projects, you can also do it by projects. So here I can go into this task of a penetration task now on high level. And I can say, I spent two hours. I can choose my client and I can hit save. So now let's see what happens. So here you can see that I added two hours of actual time before I had one hour in the sub item. So therefore I have zero time left. Now let's just say I'm going to the same exact thing on the sub item level. I go in, I can add more time on the task level. Let's say I had half an hour, still choosing the client, hit save. And now you can see that this was automatically updated the time, which pulled it in here, which automated here. So we have three hours of expected time and two and a half hours of spent time. So what this setup does, and it's, I, I know I took some time to maybe explain it, but it's actually pretty straightforward. You have your item level, which here we have penetration test. That could be a project or it can be a specific task. And then we have sub items. The sub items roll up to the item level because they're everything that's part of the item level. So it's really easy to track project and here are the tasks under. And then we added in the time tracking piece. The time tracking piece was done on the sub item level and the item level. We use seven pace time tracker and we were able to pull the data with those automations. Now, once you have that information, the next thing that we can do is we can go to the seven pace time tracker app, which is the time sheets, and we can see the information. So I can see that I had these two penetration tests that I did. Now you can view them in a weekly view, a time sheet. There's different ways to view this information. Now, if you look at the seven pace time tracker all times, 
you can sort by client. So what I can do is I can do group by and I can choose my client. So you can see over here, just like I had, I spent two and a half hours on this client. Now you can export all this data at the end of the month, which is really what they wanted to do. But you basically have all this information in one place. Now, if I want to take this board to the next level, I can add dashboards. I can simply click on plus and my blink view. And this is where I can add my dashboards. I can add my widget, my first widget. And we can tr keep track of all the projects, let's say. So these are um, this could be projects. Yes. Now we also can add in numbers. So we can add in like the expected time on all of our projects. We just have to choose the column that we want. So here I can choose expected time. I can set a unit to it. So let's just say three hours. We only have one project. So um it's three. I just want to change it from right to left. So you can see we have three hours and I can say maybe like expected time. And then if we want, we can duplicate this and we can compare it to actual time. So I can change this to actual time. I would need both of these together because we have the sub items and the items. So now we can easily compare. Now this is going to be on a full board basis. This is not going to be per item but you do have that. If you want, you can also add a Gantt view to track your different projects. And you can see we have the different projects. If you want, you can change settings. Um, let's see what else we can add. We can add a battery widget to keep track of the statuses of all of our different projects. There's a lot of different information that you can pull in here in order to understand where your projects are holding. You can also sort them by client if you want. You can sort them by group. You can just get a lot of data. Now, if you want to continue to um, use these dashboards, you also can consider pulling in seven pace information into a dashboard where you get that data as well in one place, if that's something that would be helpful. So just to summarize, what we've done here is a really easy setup that you actually can do for most kind of companies. If you're worried about how your staff is going to use Monday.com because maybe they need something really simple, think about this setup. You have one board. On the board, you have item levels, with our pro which are projects, sub items, which are tasks, and then you have time so you can track the time of both projects. This will show you where everything is holding. And if you want to see, I want to add one more part. If you want to see the statuses of the projects. So what you can also add is you can also add a progress column that I realized I didn't add before. So I apologize. You can come here and I've added a progress column. So let's just update some of these and then I can roll this up. Show the summary over here. So now you can see how far along this project is. So to summarize, once again, <laughs> in this setup, what we've done is you have projects, sub items or tasks, and you have time where you can see expected time versus actual time. You also can see where your projects are holding in terms of the percentage that they're completed. And you can use a dashboard to gather information about the statuses of your projects, the timeline, you can cre create a Gantt view, whatever you want, whatever information you need. But this is a really, really simple build that you can set up within minutes to use monday.com. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video and remember to subscribe to receive tips and tricks on how to use monday.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.